had uh, from the outside, the middle, and halfway between had the most uniform intensity of texture. Um, when we produced the tubes, we, we spent most of the research effort on refining the structure in the billet and assumed that everything from there would be straightforward and predictable. And that's true until we got to the final flow forming stage and the flow formers had never worked with niobium before and not, not niobium in the 150 millimeter diameter size that we, we offered them. And, um, What happened here is that the first couple of tubes produced were used to to develop the um, conditions for flow forming. And initially, this was one tube, and in the drop down to different um, strain rate, caused a failure here. But the three tubes on the on the right were were very nice tubes and uh, were used in the in the subsequent operations. At Daisy, we also measured the the thickness profiles of the tube and they were within an acceptable range. We made the tube a little bit thicker here instead of the 2.9 millimeter, 2.8 millimeter usually used for the niobium cavities. We centered them around three and a half millimeters. Um, again, this is the misorientation distribution here for the final tube microstructure. And you can see that it's quite close to random. The random is defined by the McKinsey distribution which is shown here in blue. And these are the grain boundary angles here and the number fraction. The grain size here was about 14 microns with a very weak texture. The result of that compared to the larger grain size daisy material is that the surface roughness after tensile testing is shown here in the red line is much less as an order of magnitude less than the surface roughening caused by plastic deformation that we saw in the, uh, the daisy material. And that's because the grain size is about an order of magnitude less. Formability testing in this material showed uh, excellent formability up to very near the end of the hemispherical dome test where we had some uh, localized yielding. One issue though with going to a finer grain size is that the strength increases and we had a concern with the thicker wall and the higher strength of this material. The strength of this material was at about um, 85 MPA versus um, 65 for the daisy material. We were concerned about whether we'd be able to form it with the same equipment when we were at the, at the limit of the um, hydroforming equipment. But it, it was still uh, successful. Again, this is the um, profile ring here, which is applied to the outside of the tube for the reducing the necks. This is a three cell section that was formed into uh, the precursor to the hydroforming. The reason we used three cells, even though the tube was designed for nine cells, is that the, the lathe wasn't large enough to handle a piece for nine cells. So in order for us to put this into production, one thing that needs to be done in both the, the spinning and the hydroforming is that machines have to be built that can handle this. And this again is the hydroforming equipment, the first stage of hydroforming, and then the dies are changed, and this is the final stage. The um, result of this was that from the SPIR2 production, we had three very nice three cell cavities, and two that were a little bit questionable, and these were then used to assemble a nine cell. Um, we also tested some of the, the three cell, but we weren't as uh, optimistic about that. And uh, for good reason, the picture on the right is the uh, three cell cavity that we tested at uh, Jefferson Lab with Peter Kneisel's help. And we developed a, a leak at uh, superfluid helium temperatures. It didn't leak under pressure testing but it leaked during the SRF testing, and the test was stopped at, uh, at 20 megavolts per meter. On the other hand, the three cell from uh, DAISY that was tested shortly before that uh, showed good results up to 
close to um, 30 millivolts per meter. The uh, best of the three, or the best of three three cells were assembled into a nine cell and it's been welded and the stiffener rings have been applied at Jefferson Lab and the um, um, leak testing has been successful, warm and cold, and that waits to be tested. So we have some other issues that we focused on making a tube that could be extruded successfully and give us good enough results for hydroforming. That hadn't been done before because the extrusion process tend to make a non-uniform structure with a coarse grain size. But by producing a very fine grain size in the billet, we were able to successfully produce the tube. Um, the work that needs to be done is refinement of the later stage of processing of flow forming. And uh, that should be done simultaneous with the development of uh, more tube by ATI Chang under Fermilab sponsorship. We're waiting for those orders to be uh, placed. Um, one thing that um, we might consider doing, initially we thought the finer the grain size, the better, because it gives a smoother surface on forming. But with a fine grain size, because of the hull patch effect, you also increase the yield strength. And nature doesn't give us things for free. When you increase the strength, as shown here in this paper from Octomaterialia, you decrease the ductility because the fracture of the material is a function of the energy of fracture. And if you increase one, the other one has to decrease. So we've, we've lost some of the ductility here that you have in the coarser grain material. And we might want to, to look at a little bit larger grain size, probably closer to the grain size used for a sheet, which is around 50 microns instead of the 20 micron we were using. And finally, what we found is that uh, we could produce nine cell cavities either by the DAISY method of three plus three plus three or with our method of a tube that could go into um, a full nine cell. The heavily recrystallized, heavily deformed recrystallized billet allowed us to make a fine grain weekly textured tube using extrusion process. And we think that using the hydroforming method will allow us to develop an industrial production capability for ILC cavities with uh, less scattering SRF performance. And we're working on some process optimization studies now. Thank you.